Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com. And in response to a lot of comments I was getting on uh, another review that I did, a lot of you guys are talking about how you'd rather have the Motorola Droid Turbo than the Nexus 6, but it just sucks that it's an exclusive on Verizon, etc., etc. So, I did a little experiment, and it turns out that you actually can use the Motorola Droid Turbo on other GSM carriers at least, and there's a few caveats involved which we'll get to later, um, but it's relatively easy to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a Motorola Droid Turbo, and then set it up for use on other carriers. Okay, first up, you have to buy the phone. So you can either go onto Craigslist and try to buy one used, which is probably the best bet, um, just save you a little bit of money. Otherwise, you can go to Verizon's site here, and we're gonna purchase it here. So you're going to pick which one you want, whether the ballistic one or the regular one. Then for options here, you're going to choose $5.99 full price. Choose whatever color you want, etc. Hit add to cart, select continue to plans and accessories. Make sure that full price is selected. Again, all of that stuff is correct. Hit continue. You're going to decline protection. We're going to click view single line plans here on the right. Choose the lowest one. Continue again, continue to cart, and then you're gonna check out. So we are choosing a monthly plan here, even though we are getting the phone with no contract. Verizon forces you to do that. They're gonna activate it and everything. But at the end of the day, what we're gonna do is after the 14 day trial period, if you decide to keep the device, then we're going to just cancel the monthly contract. So you might have to pay a portion of this or the entire one month, but you won't have to pay any more than that because you'll have canceled and you won't get charged for your second month because you don't have service. So the price due right now is whatever your taxes are plus the cost of the phone. It comes out to roughly the same as a Nexus 6. It's a little more extensive because you're gonna have to pay a portion or all of this, um, but for those of you that really wanted this instead of the Nexus 6, it's roughly, roughly the same price. So you're gonna check out and go through all of this and you can either ship it directly to yourself or go pick it up at a local store. Okay, then once said phone arrives and it's all active and you've got signal, you're gonna put your fingernail under the volume rocker, pull it out to remove the Verizon SIM card and then take whatever your normal carrier SIM card is. Uh, keep in mind that it is a nano SIM that is required. So if you don't have one, you're gonna have to go get one from your carrier and then put that in. You'll see I'm using a T-Mobile one for this. Then eventually you'll just see signal bars. There's no need to unlock this phone. Normally when you use a different SIM card with a phone, you have to buy an unlock code and unlock the phone with a code. Uh, but Verizon doesn't lock their phones anymore for some reason. They just assume that you're never gonna do this. So as soon as you put the SIM card in, you just have signal. You do get a little warning up here that says SIM card is not from Verizon. Just swipe that away and you won't ever see it again. Um, you'll notice that I don't have any sort of data connection. So to solve that, we need to pull down the notification shade Tap the icon, go to settings, go to more, go to mobile networks, access point name. So this is basically the information that the phone needs to know where to get the internet and picture messaging from. Uh, phones normally automatically put this in, but because this phone is an exclusive Verizon, it doesn't have the ability to automatically download the APN. You have to put it in manually. So we're gonna tap the little plus sign. You can name it your carrier name, whatever you want. This part doesn't matter. The rest of this, you need to fill out um, with the information that is specific to your carrier. So you can click on the link below. I actually have a repository on my site where I've collected a bunch of these and kind of just put them in a little uh, area of the website. You just click on uh, internet settings, then the country that you're using the phone in, and then the carrier name, and you'll be presented with all of these, and you just need to put them in uh, the appropriate fields. Once you've entered all of that info in, you're gonna tap the three dots and hit save. And then tap this little button here just to make sure that it turns blue. And you'll see a data connection eventually. And here with T-Mobile, I'm getting LTE. And there you go, easy enough, right? Well, here's where the caveats come in. Um, and you need to know this stuff uh, in order for the rest of that to work properly. So we need to get a little nerdy for a second and I apologize in advance, but we have to talk about frequencies. So every carrier uh, has different frequencies that they project their signal over. Um, with LTE, a lot of the carriers all use the same bands or frequency bands, like two and four, for example, um, and there's certain megahertz and that's just what they project in. But sometimes they don't overlap. AT&T, for example, uses a certain frequency that Verizon does not. And since this phone was always meant for Verizon and not AT&T, that frequency just isn't in the phone. 
So here in New York at least, that frequency is used a lot. So when I was putting this on AT&T, uh, a lot of times I only got HSPA+, which was still decent speeds, but it wasn't LTE. I would walk into a certain neighborhood though, and then all of a sudden I'd have LTE. So that tells you that the other frequencies are working fine, it's just depends on where you are, which, which frequency is gonna be more dominant. Now when I used it on T-Mobile though, I had no issues. The LTE was pretty much the same as Verizon's. I had it everywhere, it was pretty fast actually, um, and it worked just fine. So if you're using whatever carrier you are using, you wanna double check and just kind of make sure that you're getting the right frequencies after you do all the things I just showed you. So for example, buy the phone, do everything I just showed you, Use it for a few days and see if your LTE frequencies are working properly. But if you do it within the first 14 days, you do have the option to return the phone and get a full refund from Verizon. So I would do all that, test it out for a few days. If it doesn't work, return it. If it does, and then after the 14 days, you just cancel your Verizon service since you got a month to month contract and you're good to go. So I hope that worked out for you. Uh, let me know in the comments below if it did, and then also if the frequency thing is causing an issue for you, or if you're fine. Maybe it's just certain parts of the country, like New York, for example, that certain frequencies are more dominant. If you like this video, uh, thumbs up it, share it, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all of those things. And um, as always, thanks for watching.